Hello everyone, welcome again to another podcast from Teacher Joseph. Today we're going to talk uh, about a story which is in the Guardian newspaper. We're going to read through it actually. It says, far-right violence riots erupt in Southport after online falsehoods. Quite a headline that, isn't it? So we're going to go over what that means. But basically, a few days ago in Southport, a number of children sadly lost their lives because a man with a knife uh, entered a gymnasium. That's a place where you take sports, a gym or gymnasium. And he unfortunately harmed a number of people. Some of them died, some of them are recovering, some of them are in hospital in critical condition. The story we're reading today is not exactly about that incident, but it's about what's happened afterwards. Now, it says here, far-right violence, that's a reference to the political opinion that's at the bottom of this, or is starting it, as opposed to the middle, left, right. You know, in politics, they refer to the far left and the far right uh, when they're talking about extremism. It says far right violence, riots, that's, of course, bad behavior where things are damaged, erupt, volcanoes erupt, I'm sure you know the meaning, is when things really begin uh, to bubble over, just like a volcano does. It's a metaphor, of course, Uh, there's no fire coming, well, (laughs) at least not in the beginning anyway. Then it says, in Southport, a seaside town, after online falsehoods, A falsehood is simply an untruth. So far-right violence, okay, far-right politics, uh, riots erupt like a volcano. They kind of bubble up in Southport after online falsehoods. And there is indeed uh, pictures of fire here as well. But you can use the word erupt without thinking about fire. You can say, for example... Uh, that an argument erupted on the bus. Okay, but this is much more serious. Uh, Riots erupt in Southport after online falsehoods. And the UK government have called for respect for the police while um, they are investigating. This all started because after these young children were killed, uh, the media, social media particularly, reported that um, it was somehow uh, related to uh, a local mosque or an Islamic gathering. We'll read more about it. Let's begin. Police should be shown respect while they investigate the Southport stabbing attack. Yvette Cooper of the government has urged, as she condemned the thuggery of rioters in the town. A thug is someone who um, acts unlawfully. You know, a thug is the man who comes and breaks your windows or steals your bag. <clears throat> It says here, far-right protesters pelted, that means uh, threw at police officers, uh, something. Far-right protesters pelted officers with glass bottles and bricks and attacked a mosque in Southport last night after a flood of disinformation spread on social media uh, after Monday's tragedy. That's the one involving the girls. Marseilles police said an officer suffered a suspected broken nose uh, and police vehicles were damaged 
and set alight, that means set on fire. Uh, let's see. So the police have posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, they've said a number of officers have been injured, cars set alight, and a shop broken into and looted, that means robbed, in Southport. This is completely unacceptable. We're gathering evidence, uh, and those responsible will be brought to justice. The force said earlier that it believed that a large group believed to be supporters of the English Defence League had thrown items towards a local mosque. Uh, let's see. Yes, in the aftermath of Monday's attack, so after Monday's attack, uh, for which a 17-year-old was arrested, several false accusations were spread on social media with incorrect names of the attacker. The only details about the suspect released by police are that he is a 17-year-old from the village of Banks in Lancashire who was born in Cardiff. Speaking to broadcasters last night, uh, Yvette Cooper, I think she's our interior secretary, she branded, we did that word last week, it just means um, she named the unrest a total disgrace. Uh, the Home Secretary, yeah, that's her, the Interior Minister, the Home Secretary, said the community had thanked the police for their heroism, <clears throat> adding that is why it is so appalling to now see those same police facing violent attacks. Um, yeah, it looks like a group of people from this English Defence League uh, have decided somehow that the man who committed this terrible offence was either Muslim or he had a connection to that local Masjid, or mosque as it's called. I think Masjid is the Arabic name that we sometimes use to refer to mosques here. It says here, a prominent British conspiracy theorist had been filming at the crime scene where he calls for emergency military rule. Dear, that's awful. Um, and it seems that the source for the false name of the attacker was a website which has been seen by this newspaper, which, by the way, is The Guardian. Uh, I'm not going to read the names of it. it. It acts like an American network news channel. So it named the boy, and that's what started the violence. Um, but... Here it's saying that these were false claims and there were other false claims shared uh, on TikTok. Um, the Guardian has also seen evidence that these uh, social media influencers, if I can call them that, um, posted a subsequent video in which uh, this is one of them. He apologized for probably incorrectly naming their suspects after seeing some headlines. Uh, he was very angry, he said. He was sorry for naming the boy because it probably was wrong. Well, it's a bit late for that because it created riots. One mosque in the center of Southport has been attacked. This whole street looks like it's on fire. Um, Dr. Rod Dackham, the head of the Department of Political Economy at King's College London and an expert in conspiracy theories, said individual social media users had been important in spreading a lot of misinformation as well as fake media sites, which added a little bit of credibility but with completely wrong information oh that's very sad isn't it um it's very sad of course that these children died it's also very sad that um this mosque 
was attacked. Everyone has a right to gather in their own community centers for whatever reason. Uh, and for someone to be in social media demanding um, military rule and other things is really over the top. Absolutely awful. Appealing to, of course, the more stupid amongst us. And uh, it just goes to show how quickly wrong information can cause violence. So now there's two problems. A group of kids who sadly lost their life and a group of very innocent Islamic people who've been wrongly blamed as somehow being associated with this. And there's no direct evidence mentioned anywhere linking that place to the deaths of these kids. So, yeah, that's a very sad story in today's uh, media. Uh, this comes from The Guardian, Wednesday, 31st of July, today, the last day of July. And, uh, yeah, it's um, extremely upsetting to read. And... Uh, if we just look at that headline again, uh, it's very interesting because what it's saying here is that it's caused by far-right violence. And far-right violence, of course, um, are people who have very strong views about immigration, uh, maybe even skin color as well, or religious rights. I don't know. But um, uh, no doubt this will have repercussions and there will be an investigation and somebody somewhere will, of course, suffer for this. Um, the group responsible, I believe their leader left the country recently to avoid arrest. So I don't know what's happening with them. Um, and no doubt it will take a long, long time before it's investigated and they work out who is behind it and everything else. Uh, there's a neighboring headline in the same newspaper uh, which says that they're currently investigating a bombing, a terrorist bombing, which took place in 1998. And there's an inquiry that's just going on now, uh, many, many years later, uh, of course, that was much more serious, but it just shows how long it takes to sometimes get to the bottom of these things. So very interesting. Yeah, so rather sad, rather sad story there. So just to uh, link this in with our weekly lesson, which is all about sports. So these kids were in a gym. They were at a dance class. A gym, gymnasium in English, is largely used to talk about a place where you take exercise. It's not used in any other way. I know across the world sometimes gymnasium is used uh, to talk about curriculums or types of courses that you may be doing. Uh, we don't use that word here in that way, at least not in everyday life anyway. Um, so important to remember the other word, which is in my weekly lesson, uh, which talks about these kind of things uh, where we don't understand what's happening. Uh, that word is to fathom, to fathom. And I really can't fathom today why anyone would walk into a gymnasium and kill a group of kids, and equally, I'm equally unable to fathom why a group of English people would go to a mosque and start throwing things at it and trying to destroy it. That's not my experience of Britain. That's not the Britain I grew up in. Uh, so I don't know what's fueling these ideas. Well, I do. We've just read it. Social media. Uh, but I I don't get the idea that people are thinking that somehow um, 
this caused that horrific event. I, I don't see any connection between the two things, kids losing their life and a mosque in the same town. The identity of the perpetrator, the criminal, has not even been established. Uh, so it sounds a bit like a witch hunt, doesn't it? So I can't fathom any of this. Really strange. And uh, no doubt by today, the police will have it back under control, especially when these people realise that uh, they were acting on false information. The boy, whoever he is, apparently was uh, named, but it wasn't the correct name that was given. And the um, at least one of the social media influencers has apologised for that. Right, well, sad story today, sad story today, but there we are, and uh, whatever you're doing today, enjoy your day. See you. Bye.